Yeah. I 1000% believe that depression, anxiety, BPD, mental illnesses in general are very spiritual. But I I tend to not think that ADHD right. is as much spiritual. If one of you wants sex and the other is busy, would you interrupt or wait till later? Oh, this is the question. This one is close to home for us. <laughs> the give and take would be, you say, babe, I get it. Let's, let me finish vacuuming and then we'll have sex. And the give for me could be like, okay, you can finish vac, like do not deprive your spouse sex, except mm -hmm. for a season if it's agreed upon because of prayer. If your body is not your own anymore. It's like, let's look to love each other in this way. For this, the hubs that is more physical, how to really bring the woman to get into it. Mm -hmm. What happens if you get married and realize you are not sexually attracted to your partner? Well, this is interesting because this is where, you know, the whole try before you buy. Eesh, this is why you should not have sex before marriage. Part of me wants to be like, get over it. <laughs> this is maybe God punishing you. <laughs> That's not how that works. But, um... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you need a radical life transformation of removing every single possible thing that you possibly can out of your life, whether it's literally only watching rated G movies from here on out. And it is getting down on your knees on a regular basis, begging God to renew your mind and remove this garbage from your mind that you filled it with so that you can see sex in a beautiful um, way, in the way that God intended it. The Songs of Solomon uses the words arouse, awaken. And so that's kind of, if, if you can hold hands and you're able to just like, man, I just appreciate this person, but it's not awakening or arousing stuff, mm -hmm. I'd say. But if you're suddenly hugging and you guys are really close together and your faces are close together and you are feeling this, I don't want to say like arousal, but the, the, <laughs> the love is being aroused. It's being awakened. I want to do more with this person. I'm tempted. I'm drawn. I'm tempted. I'm lusting, like Morgan said. No. Why do you say Christians should be having the best sex lives? Sex was created by God, and so we're believers in God, in the creator of the universe, and the creator of sex. I believe that he wants to bless that within our marriage. And say that you need touch from your boyfriend, who's not your husband, for healing. Makes me think, are you sure you need that, or could you find that in the lord in the bible god is love there's like two places where it says god is love mm -hmm. and then a lot where it says god is whole where it emphasizes god's holiness mm -hmm. but how much is god's holiness emphasized now in 2022 america christians have fallen into the trap in allowing the world to tell us what love is rather than allowing the word to tell us what love is God makes it very clear what love is. Love sometimes is discipline. Love sometimes is saying no. Love sometimes is saying, I have a better plan, a better way for you. We're not going to go down this path and you're going to deny your flesh and you're going to say no to this sinfulness and I'm going to lead you down into righteousness, into holiness, into purity. That's love, not this weird just whatever you want to do you go for it sweetie pie and if it leads you into damnation for the rest of your life for all of eternity i love you so go ahead if it makes you happy right now that's fine um and i just think christians need to stink and wake up and read the word and stop looking at the world for their descriptions of what love is but what are you doing when you go to a wedding and then the pastor says, if anyone, <clears throat> is there anyone that has any objections to the union of this couple? You're really going to sit there right, with your mouth shut? Mm -hmm. Luca, if he were to grow up and that become his lifestyle and he comes to us and says he's going to marry a man, he's already going to know we're not going to come to his wedding. But he knows that we love him. Would it break our heart? 
not to go to our son's wedding? Yes. Yeah. Most likely. It's educational. Uh, I would heavily recommend you're looking at stick figures or <laughs> that type of stuff. Be very careful. But you would, just as I would say, if you look at that photo and it, you, you see it, it's a, a fine, attractive woman, but I could care less, doesn't, doesn't get to me, doesn't cause me any type of temptation, move right along, that's fine if that's you. But wouldn't you, Ruslan, concede that there are probably a number of men like me, and women as well, and vice versa, all that stuff, but plenty of men in my camp that would see that, and it could very well be a temptation. And I would say those men shouldn't be on the internet. I hate to be that cut and dry and that polarizing, but I would say those men shouldn't be on the internet. It is l making the, a the, the accusation that this is causing men to stumble. I think that's the issue where I go, wait a minute. If this is really causing people to stumble, they should be off of the internet. That is not unreasonable. That is a very reasonable conclusion, and they should not be at the gym. They should not be at the pool. They should not be at the beach. Keep your butt at home. Stay your butt at home. Come on. Feeling safe and feeling comfortable are two very different things. And I think she should be using the word comfortable here rather than safe. I don't know what ch church a gay person is going to walk into and feel unsafe in the sense of any second now someone could stab me or my life is in danger. I am unsafe here. They made a really big deal. It was when Trump became president right during that time. And they made a really big deal of posting online. Hey, LGBTQ, you're about to be so persecuted and our home is a safe space. Fair enough. But again, it's <laughs> all that safe space stuff is so just overused, man. And